hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner, and this is my review for last night's episode of Being Mary Jane, season four, episode 19, Feeling Seen. I didn't write it down, and it's on my DVR, so I just had to look over. Um, so it was a good episode. It was a season finale. No, was it a season finale? No, the season finale comes on next week. Um, so it was a good episode. I have been, you know, back and forth on how much I liked this season of Being Mary Jane. There was a lot of back and forth between the storylines. I was like, I hope they don't, you know, try to mess up the relationship with her and Justin. Um, but, you know, I like the way it's going. Let's hope they don't disappoint me. Um, so the episode starts off and does have, you know, Mary Jane and Justin there in bed being nasty together. And... Um, he was like, you know, you haven't checked your phone, you know, all this time or whatever. And she's like, yeah, I'm a different person. You know, I've, I've changed since you've been gone. And he's like, well, I hope not too much because, you know, I like the person you were. And, you know, so they have that whole thing. So, the next scene, they show Kara and Mary Jane talking. And Kara's talking about show ideas and stuff like that. And Mary Jane isn't listening too much. She's kind of in her own thoughts. And she's like, Mary Jane, you're not even listening to me. And she's like, oh my God, yeah, you know, Justin, um, you know, I've learned so much since he's been gone and I don't think he's ready for like this new me. Um, I don't know how, to, I was already to, 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 you know, tell him what happened since he's been gone, and, you know, kind of let him in on how I feel differently now. And you know, I just don't think Justin is ready. And Kara's like, you know, what are you talking about? She was like, you know, because I've just changed and, you know, it's just, I'm just different. And, you know, then she was like, and when we have sex, you know, he doesn't look me in the face. He doesn't look me in the eye. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so she's like, yeah. She, and Kara's like, what are you talking about? She's like, you know, you're in that good, you know, you're in that mood. And, you know, you, you just want that face-to-face -face connection. She's like, he doesn't do that. She's like, I'm looking at him, and he's doing this. He's looking, he's not looking me in my face. And my thing is, some people don't want to look you dead in your face during sex. I mean, well, you know, I get it those moments. And sometimes you have that connection. You do want that person to look at you. I'm like, but maybe he just has something else on his mind. But, you know, it doesn't matter. But, you know, Kara, like, you know, he really cares about you. You know, you, you know, he came back from Paris for you. And she's like, yeah, but sometimes caring about a person just isn't enough to fulfill it. And I get what she means. She wants that true, unrequited love, love, love. But, you know, Justin does care for her. And I think sometimes Mary Jane sabotages stuff. And I'm like, is this another way for her to sabotage this relationship? Um, the next thing that we see... Oh Danny. Danny irks my nerves. She irks all the nerves that I have. She irks the nerves that I don't have. She irks the nerves that were already irked before and they went away and they came back to irk some more because she irks my fucking nerves. So she's complaining to Kara about the story that Kara tried to have to pitch to her, which was, I think it was about like an AIDS gala or something. It was something about AIDS, either a fundraiser or a gala. Something about that. I can't remember exactly what it was. And she's like, you know, I don't want to do that story. You know, why? that's not the story I want to do. You know, that's just stupid. And she's just bitching. Like, I paid my dues and, you know, I sh should be able to pick my own stories. And, you know, I get all these clicks on social media. You know, my fan base proves that I've, you know, earned my dues and I paid my dues. I'm like, bitch, what? No, and I try not to be racist or say racial things on here. But it was a classic, I'm a white woman in America syndrome that Danny has. And I get that's the character that she's playing, the way she's a white woman in America. And, you know, she wants to make America great again. And, you know, that's her thing to where she's just ignorantly racist in, in many different ways. And I like I care reminding her, getting all them clicks on social media doesn't mean that you paid your dues as a journalist. You know, you have to do the work to say that you earned, you know, you paid your dues. And she was like, you know what, you're right. The clicks are better. She just gets on my damn nerves. But, anywho. Um, Justin also has a conversation with Mary Jane. Let her know that Simone's sister, Simone is a dead ex that he had, um, wants to talk to her. And she's like, oh, is it because she's mad about the stuff that was on social media and she kind of wants to choose, choose me on about it? And he was like, no, you know, that did have her a little rattle, but she's okay. 
but she kind of wants to talk to you probably to get you on her side. She's like, for what? And he was like, well, she probably wants you to help me, to help talk me out of donating the $30 million. And I mean, to, to stop talking about donating the money. And she was like, all of it? And he was like, yeah, all $30 million. And the damn stylist was doing her hair passed off. I mean, that is a lot of money. And, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the next scene we see, Patrick and Nisi are in the kitchen. You know, Nisi's getting ready to go to work and stuff. And, you know, Paul comes in, like, anybody want breakfast? So, Nisi, like, he's like, I'm cooking eggs. And he's like, no, Grandpa, I'm fine. I have to leave with the kids. And Patrick's like, no, I'm going to grab some on the way out. So, you know, Grandpa Paul leaves out. And Nisi, like, you still give him, give him the cold, the, you still give him Grandpa the cold shoulder? And he like, you still call him Grandpa? I'm like, Patrick, you going too goddamn far now. Now you're being rude and disrespectful and stupid. And she's like, what else will I call him? And then, you know... <laughs> She tells him, like, you know, it's uncomfortable being around y'all. Basically because her dad is making it awkward. Because you're giving him the cold shoulder just because he's not your biological father. But he raised your ass, bruh. Okay? Blood makes blood doesn't make you family. Family makes you family. Being family makes you family. Um. So, you know, she's like, you know, you, are you mad because that old drunk man didn't get a chance to raise you. She was like, look, Grandpa took you in. He raised you. He not only took you in and raised you, he took your kids in, and he took your kids' kids in and raised them as his own. So, you know, he, you owe him more than the goddamn gone cold shoulder. You know, see, so he deserves more than that. You tripping, you need to get yourself together. You need to get over yourself. When Nisi checks you, you know you're doing some crazy stuff because Nisi was the one buying that boy them cars. She was also the one go on, take a trip to New York to fuck that boy on Tinder. You know what I'm saying? Different things. But she has come a long way. And she is growing up into her own as a woman, a mother, and being more responsible. So she, so she sees her father as being stupid, basically. Uh, and when she checks him in that way, he thinks about what she said. Because you can see him, you know, you can see the wheels turning. Um, the next thing that we see is, you know, Kara, Justin, and Mary Jane see that even though they were hoping that the job, that Garrick's job would be between Kara and Justin, the big ups had brought in a third person to take the job right now. And his name was, what was it, Peter? Oh, God. I be hearing things, I'm here by myself and I be panicking. I was like, wait a minute, I gotta make sure it's somebody not like hide in the back and I went back I ain't went back there yet. Anywho, so yeah, it's Pete, not Peter. But you know, they brought in this new person to be the Garrett, to be the EP of the show. Um, and they're kinda like, damn, we thought it was gonna be us. We need to band together to get him out of here. So Mary Jane, like, look, I have a plan, but it's gonna take all of us to make it work. Cause the person is like he doesn't have any experience in doing exactly what they're doing. And they compared him to, you know, it's just like Donald Trump being president. I Meaning Donald Trump ain't had no goddamn going, still doesn't have any experience being president. He's a fucking horrible president. Um, and this guy who was EP and he was like, he ran like some amusement park. Some, st a clown running, you know, a clown running shit. It's basically what I got from that. So, you know, Mary Jane, Kara, and Justin me and she's like look my plan is how about we pitch a show to Danny you know because we can't handle Danny and, you know because Kira's having Kira's having issues with Danny and she was like if we pitch a show idea to Danny have Danny do it have it be a train wreck for whatever reason that would get Danny in trouble or get Danny in check but also if we have Peter run point on it and he kind of puts Danny under his wing, when it goes south, he gets in trouble and he'll end up getting fired for it. So, you know, I'm like, I already said all that. I'm looking at my notes. That's why I don't like looking at my notes because I'll be talking off my brain. Um, anywho, that's Mary Jane's, Mary Jane's plan. But as she's saying this is what they should do, Carrie and Justin can't stop fucking arguing. She's saying, well, let's just be sure that you Justin doesn't, doesn't use any dirty tricks. Justin then says, I don't have dirty tricks. Oh, but you know, I got Mary Jane in the, in the anchor chair, but you did it. And it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Basically saying, you know, Justin does dirty tricks, but Justin's saying, well, you don't have enough tricks to do things in a, in a, in a fast manner. And then Mary Jane was like, look, 
It ain't, let's just not even think about it. Not even do it. It ain't gonna work because y'all two can't get along and y'all can't stop arguing. So, get used to y'all new boss, Peter. And Pete. And then she left. So, the next thing that we see is Nisi pulling up to the girl Anika's house. And she gets a call from her boss, Claudia. She's like, hey, Claudia, what's up? And I'm like, why Claudia call her Nisi? What Nisi do? And she was like, your friend didn't come through for my friend. And, you know, you suggested the, the whole car seat thing. And your friend didn't answer. Now my friend, you know, is basically ass out. You know, it's really easy to get a bad review. Y'all didn't get your shit together. So we find out that Anika, the girl who was running the car seat business, did not come through when she was supposed to for someone who paid for a car seat. And Nisi's pissed off. So Nisi go in the house because she's like, okay, let me find out what's going on. She get there. You know, Anika is supposed to be the one watching her kids. And she found it's a random man in the house. He, op he opened up like, hey, Nisi. And at first when she looked at him, I'm looking like, okay, like, is that Anika's other boyfriend who Nisi don't like? Because she like, what the fuck are you doing here? Come to find out, she, it was a strange man. She didn't know that man. And she's like, how you know my name? And he's like, oh, you know, I'm... I think his name was Lloyd. I'm Lloyd. I'm her neighbor. She paid me sometimes to watch the kids when she's busy. And she like, wait. So she's not here? And he was like, nah, but it's cool. You know, they just in the back playing. And she's like, wait. And this ain't the first time that you watched my child? And she was like, he was like, nah, but you know, it's okay. So Nisi getting pissed off. And then she's getting pissed off. Amika's walking in. And Amika like, hey, Nisi. And Nisi like, and she walk in with another guy. And he's like, <laughs> Let's talk outside. I need to holler at you real quick. So they go outside on the porch or whatever. And, you know, we can like, hey, girl, what's up? And he's like, I know, you know, you don't have two strange men in there with my kids. I completely agree. I think, like, when you hire someone to watch your kids and when someone is your babysitter, you can't have strangers around my kids. Like, point blank, period. And, I mean, you shouldn't even have company around my kids. Or if you do, I should know who they are. I should know who's around my kids at all fucking times. And to have two strange men around my kids. And not only that, you had this strange man watching my son and my daughter. I think she had a boy and a girl, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't know this man. And, you know what I'm saying? She's like, plus, you know, you got my boss calling me because you didn't give her friend the car that she needed. And she going off, going off on me like I didn't get my shit together and it's you. What's your problem? And she was like, but dang, Nisi, it ain't that bad. You know, Lloyd going to school to get his uh, degree in daycare. And she was like, I wouldn't care if Lloyd was a prince. I completely agree. Fuck Lloyd. I don't know that man. And she was like, and what you tripping for? You know, what's that man that came over? Her friend, the guy who she came back, was like, yeah, old boy came, he had some time, and he asked me, do I want to hang? And, you know, he got out early, so I went to go hang out with him. The simple fact that she had every reason, she was giving Nisi every reason as to why she was doing the wrong thing is what made Nisi even more pissed off. Because Nisi was like, you know what? This is not working for me. You know what I'm saying? I can't have you I can't have you watch my kids anymore. You know, you fucking up the car business too. I'm done helping you. I can't leave my kids with you. And I agree. Because for one, what you're saying is you've left my kids with this man before because he's trying to be in daycare. He can be doing that because he wanna be rapist. Who knows? And you did it and you did not tell me. Now had you told me and said, Hey, when I can do things or I have something else to do, this is who I have watched your kids. Is it okay with you? And then Nisi could have said either yes or no, but you didn't give her that opportunity. You just left her kids with some strange man, and that's wrong. Not only that, you were supposed to take someone to car seat to make some money, but instead of doing that, you wouldn't hung out with a man who clearly can't be helping you because you're out here selling goddamn car seat rides, okay? Irresponsible bullshit. And Nisi just finally realized that she couldn't depend on that girl because it was times before when she would say, well, why go and take the kids over there and she ain't there? Or I would go and she wouldn't answer the door. Dumb bullshit. So she went and got her kids and she left. She's like, you know, I'll watch your kid because I said I would, you know, this last time, that, like within a day or two. She's like, but after that, you know, this arrangement is done. And the girl looking like, but what? But why? You know why. Because that was wrong. That was, just, oh my God, I was so mad. You know, this is crazy. So, a couple different things happen next. And that's, that's exactly what I wrote down. A few things happen next. We see Kara and Justin, and they're at a bar, and they're talking to Pete. And they're trying to 
basically trick him into letting them offer Danny a story. And so they're like, you know, hey, you know, you're doing good here. Oh, yeah, you know, things are really good. You know, we got Mary Jane and this and blah, 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 blah. Oh, but the one kind of thing we have an issue with is Danny. You know, some people say she's difficult. And then Carol, like, yeah, because I tried to picture a story and she didn't like it. And he was like, what? Why? You're the producer. You pitch your story. She's supposed to do it. No one gets to pick their stories. You know, that's just the, that's the job. And then they're like, yeah, right. And then so Justin like, well, you know, I had this story about you know this American girl who is restoring homes and all this other stuff, and I was trying to pitch it to her, but I don't think she'll listen because it's me. And just like, yeah, so then I was going to say, you know, maybe I should pitch it to her and she'll listen to me. So their plan was, let's have Justin pitch it to her and hopefully she'll take it. And then he was like, no, nah, you know, that's okay. You know, I have a story that I think would be great for her, you know, and I'll pitch it to her. And they're like, oh, but wait. He's like, nope, it's okay. So they're like, well, damn. We don't know what story he's going to pitch. So that's, it kind of messes up our plan. The next thing that we see is Patrick had been coaching or hanging out with that young guy, Javon. And Javon, as we saw from the first time he was on the scene, he kind of had an issue with gay people. So, in this particular scene, you know, Patrick had went and picked him up. They went to, like, a center to talk about Black Lives Matter. A guy was there who I believe was a gay guy from before. And Patrick, like, it's okay if he's here, right? And he was like, yeah, whatever, I guess. And they walk in. So, in this scene... Patrick is leaving. He's looking for Javon because he, because Javon, he is Javon's ride. He's gonna take Javon back home. He walked through the parking lot and he looked and you see Javon kissing the boy, who Patrick was saying, "Is it okay if he come in?" So we come to find out Javon is actually, you know, gay. He's, I won't say down low, but he's just not openly um, out and gay. And he like, if you, you still need to ride home. And he was like, "No, nah, no, nah, I don't." And Patrick, like, oh, okay. And Patrick goes through a car and Javon run off the other way. So that's the two things that we saw happen. Um, so the next thing we see is we see at the office, everyone's in the pitch meeting for the next show. So Pete is like, you know, yeah, we're going to try to shake things up. You know, people watching TV in the morning, they don't have clothes on. So, you know, TV is going to be different. We're going to have all the anchors in their pajamas. And they all look around like, what the fuck is this man talking about? He just made it odd, oddly sexual. And I'm like, I don't know where this is going. But for Mary Jane, Kara, and Justin, it's great. Because the more he fucks up, the quicker he'll be fired. And he's like, and I have this great, great story. And I think it'll be perfect for Danny. And Danny's like, oh, really? And he's like, yeah, it's about this all-American girl, you know. She's from Texas. She's building homes. She's making her, you know, her town better. I think you'll be the perfect person to talk to her. And she's like, you you know me so well. I'm like, you old flirting ass white girl, shut up. You know what I'm saying? Well, shut up, Danny. And she's like, okay, I think it's great. You know, you get me. I thank you, thank you, thank you. So then, Mary, I mean, uh, oh, damn it. Kara and Justin looking like he pitched her the same thing we pitched her, but he made it seem as if he was going to pitch her something completely different. But they're like, you know, game match point. So, um, he like, yeah, you see, all the job is to sell. I just had to sell it to her. And so they're like, okay, you know, game one, it's, it's going to be what it's going to be. So, I can't remember how this scene went but it was Justin and Mary Jane talking and he brought up the sister they was talking about Simone's sister Tiffany and about the meeting what were they talking about? Oh they were at the table they were still at the table having drinks and stuff. And were they? Damn it I don't remember what they were doing I just wrote it down but you know Justin is saying to Mary Jane um Mary Jane, no, Mary Jane was talking about she wanted to meet with Simone's sister. That's what it was. Okay, my brain's back on. And, you know, Justin was like, why? So you buy, you both can kind of, you know, make it seem as if I don't need to give away her money. You're trying to get on her side. And she was like, no, but would it be such, such a bad thing to keep the money? And he was like, look, you know, 
I want to give the money away. I want that whole part of my life to be over. I want to leave the relationship alone. I just want it to be done with. I want to lock it up and leave it alone as if it never happened. And leave it in the past. Damn, Justin. Really? So in his mind, he like, if I give away all the money, I can be done with the whole situation. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to spend her money. You know, it's her money. I don't want to think about it. You know, and that's how he's been thinking about it. So he's like, if I just give it away, the whole $30 million is all done with it. He's like, that's what he's trying to do to move forward and get past the whole thing. So the next thing that we see, Danny has her interview. You know, with a small town white woman trying to make America great again. And, you know, she's also from Texas. And, you know what I'm saying, she's probably like a little a little Southern Belle. And, you know, they're talking. And then Kara's like, ask her, you know, about the employees that she employs to build these homes. And I'm like, she's setting her up right there. Because she said it with a smile on her face. And she's like, yeah, what about the workers? What you what did you find the skilled workers? And the girl was like, oh, you know, at first it was very hard, you know, because, you know, it wasn't a lot of people around. Our time was really, you know, depleted. What the fuck? I have water bottles in my kitchen. I keep hearing stuff popping, and I'm guessing that's what it is, and it keeps scaring the shit out of me. So I'm sorry. Um, anywho, so she's like, oh, yeah, you know, it was hard to find someone skilled. And then it was like, you know, sure is, because, you know, sometimes all the young guns leave, you know, to go to go pursue other things. And she was like, yeah, so, you know. I just prayed about it, you know, I prayed about it, and, you know, I hired refugees. <laughs> and, you know, they're happy to be in this country. And then he was like, so I take it by refugees, you don't mean Christians, you mean you, you hire Muslims? And she was like, <laughs> I'm laughing because of the ignorance of the whole conversation. So she's like, aren't you worried about the terrorists? You know, isn't, is that safe? You know, isn't that such a risk? And the girl was like, they're not terrorists. You know, they're happy to be in our country. You know, the, there were mothers and children who needed places to live. And why would I not try to help them if they can come here and help build? Now they're becoming U.S. citizens. And then it was like, you know, I guess with the right provisions, I guess it could work. What she basically said was, you know, the whole Muslim ban thing. So then Kara, I mean, MJ was like, did we just get her to throw down against the Muslim ban on TV? Because she did. What she basically said was, you were bringing Muslims here? That's crazy. They're terrorists. They're a risk. Not knowing every Muslim is not a fucking terrorist. So when she then said, well, I guess with, with the right provisions, you know, I guess it's okay. They set her ass up. So, it, you know, she was stupid. So, the next thing we see is... Because she was a surprise at that. She thought this was an all-American girl who was having other white Christian people help her. And, no, she bringing in, you know, refugees from different countries to do work here. And, you know, so after the interview, she goes up to Mary Jane and Kara. And there she's like, I know you guys set me up. I've been on TV since I was 11. I know when I'm getting trolled and they're like it's a great interview you know great 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 she was like whatever you <laughs> I'm sorry I was trying to swallow you guys set me up to interview someone who's who's hard from ISIS it's like what but again it shows the ignorance of some people she then goes into Pete's office and she's yelling at because Kara was like didn't you read the the breakdown in the report and she was like didn't Pete break everything down and she was like I skimmed through it. I didn't really look through it because she, she's not a journalist. A journalist would have went through the whole thing and Kara played on that because she knew she wasn't a journalist. She probably skimmed it. White woman building homes in Texas. Oh, you know, she's great. <laughs> she didn't look at the details of it and they knew she wouldn't do that. So when she went in and accused Pete of setting her up, she was yelling, fussing, and fighting all that foolishness. So we then, the next scene we see is Mary Jane, Kara, and Justin and they're at a restaurant and they're celebrating the colossal fuck up because Pete got fired basically because Danny bitched and bitched and bitched about he set me up you know to interview someone and I didn't know him blah 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 and because he didn't prep her correctly because he didn't tell her all the details no she didn't read it but he also didn't tell her because he didn't know what he was doing either so you know because of that they got the guy Pete fired and they were like, they weren't surprised, you know, Danny even, even have, has enough clout to have gotten him fired. So Mary Jane was like, well, no, 
I kind of said something too. You know, I called up and I used my powers and I just said, hey, the person who needs to be in that position needs to be someone who is experienced. And I feel like the person for that job is probably already working here within the family. And so at this point, we know that it's between Kara and Justin. Um, what else do we see? Patrick does go pick up Javon, and you know, who we find out he's, he's not fully okay with being gay. Um, he says how he was treated unfairly when he was younger, how his family kind of, you know, disowned him. And so he has known since he was younger that he was attracted to men, but he never wanted to be that way because of the hardships that came with it. And he then said to Patrick, well, you know, because you have a great family. He's like, my family isn't that great you know, at all. And he was like, but they love you. They support you through the, through your good and your bad. Haven't they always supported you? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, see, I don't have that. And, you know, it made Patrick think, well, damn, you know, I was on drugs. I was doing all this stuff. And they supported me. Not only did they support me, the man who isn't even my father never gave up on me. You know, he's, he always treated me like a son. And, you know, it kind of made him think. So, we next see that MJ has surprised Justin and invited the sister Tiffany to dinner. And, you know, she, there, she was just saying how I'm trying to, you know, wrap it up because it's just too much to go through, to go scene by scene. But basically, she was like, you know, we've been trying to get Justin to not give this money away since the first time he got it. We also find out that the sister had her own part of the money too and she's like you know I'm using the money to live life I'm using it for what she would have wanted me to use it for she would have wanted me to put good put it to good use you know she would want me to enjoy and live life that's the kind of person she was and you know they're laughing about things and she's like you know we it was a house that he liked but he won't buy it he won't spend any of the money Justin is of course uncomfortable he kind of like okay I'm going to bra I'll right back so when Tiffany and Mary Jane are talking, the sister says, you know, I feel like he's like, she was like, look, my sister was great, but she wasn't perfect. She was a complicated person, but she lives her life to the fullest up until the end. You know, um, she then said, I feel like Justin is stuck. I feel like, and that's the reason he wants to give away the money because he wants to give it away to not deal with it. I wish he would be able to get over her death. Um, the way I have and not even get over it to like as if it doesn't matter but not stay pigeonholed to losing the girl and so yeah we next see Mary Jane and Justin talking after her talking to Tiffany and she's like look I feel like you're going to ruin our relationship and he's like what why because of the money and and um so, anywho He's like, why? And she's like, because, you know, you want to move on from it. You're trying to, to give away the money, but you're not trying to deal with the actual situation. And you're going to cause a rift between us. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin us. And she's like, well, you know, he, she's like, buy the house. He's like, we don't even have time to go to the house. And she's like, well, buy something here close to work. He's like, I don't want to do that. She's like, hell, buy a can go ice cream cone. But to spend something of the money to let go of it you know what i'm saying to, to kind of let go of that feeling and he was she's like you know, i know uh she was a great person she was so strong you know she was wonderful and he was like she was weak and she was like what and he was like in the end she was really weak she was really you know she didn't want to fight she refused treatment you know she gave up living you know she could have fought she could have lived a little bit longer and she just refused to fight she was weak she gave up you know she got so bad that in the end she kept begging me and she's like begging you for what and he's like she kept begging me to help her end it and I wouldn't you know I wouldn't do it but she kept she kept he, she kept asking she kept asking she kept asking and then you know one day I gave her what she wanted and Mary Jane was just like and he was like you know so you know I gave her I upped her payments and you know I helped her he was like, so do you think her sister would be would want me to spend her money if she knew what I did? And Mary Jane grabbed him, held his face, and said the most wonderful things ever. She said, um, you did the most loving thing. You did the most selfless thing. You gave her peace. 
she was suffering and you gave her peace and he did people don't realize when a person is going through cancer and all that stuff it's very painful so it's easy for us as people who are not going through it to want them to keep fighting and to keep going but sometimes it's just that painful and for them the best way to get over it and it's and it also depends on what stage you're in if you're in stage four and you've already been going through chemo and and and, and just treatments um everyone has that breaking points you know what i'm saying so you know but you know they kiss they hug and then they lay in bed fully clothed and they're just looking at each other right in the face and it's that connection that she wanted and it had nothing to do with being sexual it was just the connection that she was looking for um <laughs> my phone is going crazy uh we see that she lost the oprah interview basic oprah she lost the Obama interview basically because Oprah caught wind of it. Pete went to Harpo Studios. It was a whole thing which I thought was extra. It but told them this is what they're planning and so Oprah snatched the story up, snatched up Obama, snatched up Beyonce and we see that whole thing. Um what else do we see? Oh, we see Patrick brings Justin home. Because Justin had a flood in his apartment. And he walks in the house like, you know, you can stay here for a day or two. Paul walks up like, hey, what's going on? Like, oh, the water was broken in his house. So his mattress got wet. I said, you can stay here for a couple days. Is that okay? And Paul was like, he doesn't have family. And he's like, well, no, he's not welcome there. And Paul was like, oh, okay. And walked away because that's the kind of person Paul is. Patrick stops him and says, you know, um, I should have apologized for it to you already, you know. I'm sorry for how I've been acting towards you. You know, I've been meaning to say sorry for that. You know, you can't choose your family, but you chose me. And you made a big sacrifice to be the parent in my life. And, you know, Paul says, and I never regretted it. That's called family. They hug. They make up. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, The last scene is Justin goes to Mary Jane's house. And he's like, you know, I'm not going to give the money away. I'm going to keep my money. And she's like, my money, not Simone's? He's like, yes, my money. And we're going to decide what to do with it together. Yay! So we have that whole beautiful scene. The next scene, and again, it was like scene, scene, scene. So I'm not skipping this up. It was really scene, scene, scene. Um, next, we see that MJ gets the call from Garrett when she's playing the little game with um, Aaliyah and the Silas guy. And, you know, she takes the call. And she comes in and she sits down and she's like, they're like, what's wrong? You know, your boss calls you at 10 o'clock at night. It has, it has to be something. And she's like, they're giving me a vote in who takes Garrett's place. Because Garrett, feel, Garrett feels bad that I lost the Obama interview. So I have to pick who wins, who gets a job between my best friend and my boyfriend. And it goes off. So, great episode. That's my whole review. Let me know how you liked about it. I'm Jay Lee. This is Jaylee's Corner.